Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the South Donetsk direction where the Russians continue their offensive operation and today we have changes on the ground according to uh, pro-Ukrainian mappers. Deep State reported that as a result of clashes the Russians managed to answer the southeastern part of the settlement, yet uh, the Russians haven't managed to answer the territory of the Farms in the southern part of Katerinovka, but uh, the Russians are pushing, the Russians are advancing, and most likely during the next few weeks, the village of Katerinovka and the village of Antonovka would be captured by the Russians. Now let's talk about the Kurahova direction, because uh, very interesting updates are coming from this territory. If you remember, during the previous few days, we've been talking a lot that uh, something strange uh, have happened in this area, because we stopped receiving any updates from the territory. We did have the significant number of geolocations of how the Russians were FPV droning the Ukrainians along the living road or the death road. We've been receiving lots of updates for the previous weeks of how the Russians were trying to take under control the western part of Novoselidovka and the eastern part of Izmailovka. But starting probably on the 13th of October, uh, something at the beginning of this week, uh, the level of updates has been reduced significantly. And uh, today on the 17th of October, the Russians uh, resumed their activity and now there are very heavy clashes in this direction. Let's discuss the information, the posts that were published by the Ukrainian sources on the ground. After an almost two weeks of post, the Russian armored forces resumed air strikes on the city. Over the past few days, the Russians bombed Kurahov with the entire range of FAB, except FAB 3000. Regularly, several strikes a day, FAP 1500 almost every day. The main blows of aviation fall on dense urban deployment and the industrial part of the city. The private sector is hit by artillery. So that was stated today by the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground from this direction. Another important thing, the armed force of the Russian Federation is currently carrying out a rather large regrouping in the Kurahov direction. The deadline is the beginning of the 20th of October. The same processes is, is in Pakrovsky direction are almost completed. Obviously, on the eve of the US elections, the uh, Russians will want to size as much as possible. So this is exactly what we uh, were discussing during the previous days uh, about the complete something like operational pause. But once again, uh, starting on the 17th of October, the Russians resumed their activities, they resumed their offensive operation, and now the Russians are trying to encircle both uh, Novoselidovka, Izmailovka, Garnyaka, and Kurahovka, Selidova, um, Stan and the cities and the agglomerations. For example, in this video we can see how the Russians were bombing the most western, southwestern part of Novoselidovka and uh, this is just another fab arrived on Ukrainian positions. Also, we have uh, finally we got confirmation about Russian progress, additional progress between the villages of Novoselidovka and Izmailovka and this information was published by pro-Ukrainian mappers. So, this is the uh, situation on the ground on the uh, 16th of October and this is additional progress of the armed force of Russian Federation uh, by the morning of the 17th of October. So everything that we've been discussing since the beginning of the month was completely correct about the Russian attempts to attack and to cut this territory in two. Now let's talk to the most let's go to the most important area and we're talking about the southwestern part of Selidova. Uh, first we got geolocations. Uh, first we have map updates from different mappers like Syriac, like pro-Ukrainian Deep State. They confirmed that the Russians during the previous uh, 24 hours managed to improve their positions and to take additional square kilometers along the railways in the direction of the village by the name of Vishnova. So this is first report and also neutral mappers confirmed additional Russian progress in the western direction from the, from the village of Tsukurina. But later, uh, basically right before we start making the video, we got the video from the Russian side and in this video we can see the process of how the Russians were storming the Ukrainian positions along the true line in the direction of the road between that connects Selido with Kurahova. As you can see in this video, uh, the significant number of Russian armored vehicles that were attacking and storming Ukrainian positions. In this video, we can see how the Russian soldiers landed along these three lines and begin the clearing operation. We can see uh, lots of artillery strikes from the Ukrainian side. We can see the significant number of FPV drone attacks. So obviously that battle was very difficult, but the Russians managed to win the battle and to force the Ukrainians to fall back. 
and this these clashes were taking place exactly in this point and based on this video we have adjusted the map in russian favor so very important progress as you can see the russians reached uh, the dense uh, uh, complex uh, the dense network of the fortifications this one and if the russians are able to begin moving in the western direction then most likely the situation is going to be very difficult for the ukrainians now let's move further also some pro-russian sources reported that this morning the russians began the full-scale offensive operation in the direction of Silidova. Currently it's very difficult to understand where exactly the Russians are attacking but I'll remind you once again that currently there are two primary targets for the Russians. First to move along the railways in the, in the, the direction of Vishnova and the second primary uh, direction of the Russian forces is to move through the fields uh, to the west of Novogrodovka in the direction of this intersection of roads. If the Russians are able to complete these two uh, let's say attacks then the city of Silidova would be encircled with a significant number of the armed forces of Ukraine uh, with the personal of armed forces of Ukraine inside of it. Now let's move further. Also according to uh, pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions a little bit in the northern part of the settlement. Probably very soon we're going to receive first updates from the residential part of the city itself. Now let's move further and let's talk about the Chasavyar direction. The Russians continue destroying the southern part of the city and we, uh, we are focused in this area. We've been focused in this area for a very long period of time because since the beginning of October right after the Russians managed to cross the Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal and to improve their positions along the M32 road, we start receiving the significant number of geolocations exactly from this side of the city of Chasavyar. So obviously the Russians are planning to attack first in this direction with the purpose to cut the city of Chasavyar from the city of Konstantinovka and to encircle the city and to create probably another cauldron. Now let's move probably to the most important area for the previous 24 hours and we are going to talk about the city of Yes, uh, we've been talking a lot about this area and let's, uh, I'll remind you once again what they, what have been happening since the beginning of October. First of all, uh, the Russians uh, somewhere on the 6th or on the 7th of October uh, published the video on how they managed to raise the flag in the most western part of the village by the name of Yerhnikaminska. And let's uh, rewind the situation map as far as possible. So this is the video and this is the video with the Russian flag and this is the flag in the most western part of the building. And um, uh, this video was published on the 8th of October. So uh, around nine days ago. And based on this video, a lot of mappers have adjusted their maps in Russian favor. But as for the ch real changes on the ground the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported on the first on the second of October that the village of Yernikamyanska was, was captured by the Russians and that was included into official report of the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. Once again on the first of October it was reported that the village was captured. On the 8th of October we got the video with the Russian flag. Uh, the next day we got updates from different mappers like neutral mappers that the Russians managed to improve uh, invisible and unexisted positions and later later we got another report from the village of Grigorovka and that situation took place also on the 8th of October and in this video we can see another Russian flag but later pro-Russian military experts like Ryber reported that all these updates about the Russian flag in the village of Grigorovka and Verkhnikamyanska are the fake information as for Verkhnikamyanska the Russians dropped the flag with the use of FPV drone and as for Grigorovka the Russians crossed Seversky Donetsk Donbass river and under the cover and protection of PV drone established the flag but when the video was done the Russians also retreat from this territory uh, as far as possible towards the village of Shipilovka. So based on these reports and based on other reports of different mappers like uh, also once again Syriac we have adjusted map back in contested area and after that we start receiving a lot of updates that confirm that the Russians haven't didn't establish control over Verkhnikamyanska and that Ukrainians still control the territory and for example on the 16th of October we made the final adjustments in Ukrainian favor because we received a significant number of videos of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the most eastern uh, stronghold of the armed forces of Ukraine. And today on the 17th of October we probably received the most important video not from the village of Yernikamyanska but from the main stronghold in the entire severs direction and we are talking about Bilogora. Uh, this area was captured by the Russians 
and the Russian sources, the Ukrainian sources of 58th uh, uh, motorized, uh, motorized Brigade published the video of uh, how they were trying to repel Russian attack, of how the Russians were using the significant number of armored vehicles, personnel, uh, tanks, uh, ha maybe hundreds of soldiers and tens of vehicles managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt. The Russians basically launched and dropped in this attack everything they have in this direction. Very heavy clashes, the significant losses, but as a result of Clashes, the Russians managed to improve their positions and the most um, west most western location that people managed to find uh, took place exactly along this intersection of these of the three lines and uh, uh, in this video if you have access to the map you can always uh, take a look at this video in this video the Ukrainian FPV drone was uh, attacking the Russian forces exactly in this area once again based on the video real video that was published by the Ukrainian sources we have adjusted the map in Russian favor the Russians managed to take under control the biggest hill the, by the name of Belagora and currently according to military experts according to neutral mappers uh, the Russians can control everything around so important to know that the capture of this elevation is necessary to rake to take completely Verkhnikamyanska by taking control over the northern elevations the valley of Donetsk river would fall without resistance until the outskirts of Serebrianka so that that post was made by neutral experts and uh, uh, summarizing everything uh, that's everything that is located uh, to the right of this red line would fall automatically without any resistance from the Ukrainian side due to very difficult situation of the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, furthermore, uh, since the during after we got a report about control over the hill, the Russian sources launched the full scale artillery preparation and artillery attacks on Ukrainian positions. Uh, lots of artillery strikes been taking place uh, since the most southern part of Sivers to the most east part of Verkhnikamyanska for the previous few hours so something big something large is happening right now maybe during the next next few days we're going to receive the significant number of dates and maybe soon we're going to start receiving first updates and first videos of the clashes on the territory of Siversk itself now let's move further as for the northern Kupin's direction the situation is covered with the fog of war we just have reported that the Russians managed to improve their positions further in the western direction and to take under control some hill to the west of Mesa Жаревка и Стельмаховка. As for uh, the Sudra direction, the Russian offensive stopped. Now there are uh, the, the significant number of cauldrons were created by the Russians just since the beginning of the second phase of counteroffensive, and now the Russians are trying to destroy these cauldrons, also force the Ukrainians to fall back. During the previous night, the Russians were trying, the Ukrainians were trying to counterattack near the settlement of Sverdlikova. A missile strike was launched against the column of the Ukraine armed forces moving towards the settlement of Zelyony Shlyakh, where fierce fighting is currently taking place so the ukrainians were moving along this road in somewhere in this place the ukrainian convoy was destroyed ukrainians suffered losses and haven't managed to save their soldiers that appeared in the cauldrons and that's it for the short video a military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye